a very good morning year three and thank you for joining in on another video lesson it is miss callahan with your literacy lesson on wednesday the 24th of february 2021 goodness me it feels like we've been doing these lessons forever now i know me and miss dyson are all very proud of you and amazed at how much you have learned over the past six weeks we know it's been really difficult learning at home but keep going you're all doing incredible today we're going to be continuing with our taking flight topic our learning objective for today is to empathize pause the video now while you write the date and the learning objective in your literacy book for our spag warm-up this morning we're going to be looking at A and an. When do we use a and when do we use an? Can anyone recall what we learned yesterday? Let's have 10 seconds thinking time and then we'll reveal the answer. You can always pause the video if you need a little bit longer. We need to use a when the next word begins with a consonant. For example, a lamp, a door, a house, a bag, or a tomato. These all begin with consonants. We would use an when your next word begins with a vowel. Your vowel letters are a, e, i, o, and u. Vowel words are any words that begin with those five letters. For these examples, you use an. For example, an apple, an elephant, an ice cream, an orange, or an umbrella. Let's watch a song together to remind ourselves about this rule. Now we've got our head around the rule and seen lots of examples, let's try and solve some together. We have a picture here. Do I need to use a or an for the apple? Hopefully you're all shouting an at the screen. As apple begins a, which is of course a vowel. How about the next picture? Which should you use for fly? You would say a fly as the word fly begins with a consonant F. Heart. A heart because H is a consonant. Orange. A or an? An orange. 
because orange begins with an O, which is a vowel. Owl. Think about what letter it begins with. It begins with an O. O is a vowel, so it has to be an owl. Well done if you got those correct. Finally for today's spag starter challenge, choose one of the options mild, spicy or hot and rewrite the sentence correcting the mistake. The mild challenge says the boy was wearing an hat. Oh, that doesn't sound right. The spicy challenge is a question. Please, can I have a egg for lunch? Again, there's something not quite right in that sentence. Finally, the hot challenge. There was an box delivered this morning. Choose your sentence and rewrite it with the correct article. Pause the video while you do this and press play when you're ready to proceed. On to today's lesson. Our learning objective was to empathise. What does it mean to empathise? If you saw one of your friends in school looking sad, what might you do? I know you're all kind and caring children, so you'd probably want to go over to them and talk to them. You might ask them why they're upset. Or they might tell you. If you were to empathise with your friend, you might understand and share their feelings. Your friend might say that they're really stuck on their maths learning. They're finding it really tricky. You might empathise and say, yes, I feel the same. I understand why you might be a little bit upset as it's a really tricky lesson today. Can you think of a time where you empathised with a friend or family member? Today we're going to try to empathise with Tony, our main character from our video story Taking Flight. This morning I would like you to get into character. You're going to pretend that you are Tony. This week we've spent a lot of time talking about Tony's feelings and his thoughts. Today we're going to be using those thoughts and feelings to create Tony's internal monologue. What is an internal monologue? This is a person's inner voice, so the voice inside their head, which provides the thoughts and feelings passing through a person or character's mind. You might have an internal monologue going in your head at this moment in time. You might be thinking, I wonder what I'm going to have for my dinner. I'm super hungry. I know that I often have an internal monologue while I'm trying to get to sleep at night. I might be thinking, my class produced some outstanding work today in literacy. I can't wait to see what they do tomorrow. But I need to remember to print off the resources. I'll have to get up early in the morning to make sure everything's ready. Our first job is to write an internal monologue for Tony when he's in the car on the way to Grandpa's house. In this moment, how is he feeling? And what is he thinking? Look back over your literacy work from Monday and Tuesday. Which emotions did you say Tony was feeling? He might have said that he was feeling sad. He might have said that he was feeling angry. You might have said some other words that mean similar to sad and angry using your synonyms. How might these emotions affect what he is thinking? We know that he is probably thinking that he doesn't want to go to Grandpa's house. 
You can tell by his facial expression and his body language. He also uses some speech in this scene, telling his dad that his grandpa only knows how to do grown-up things. Here is an example of an internal monologue that I have written, pretending to be Tony. I can't believe that I have to go to grandpa's house. He's so boring. He only knows how to do grown-up stuff. What am I going to do all day? I wish that I could play with my dad. We could go to the park, play on the swings, and run around the field. But no! Instead, I have to spend the day alone feeling miserable. I don't want to go to Grandpa's. Is there anything that you notice about my example? You might have picked up that I spoke about Tony's emotions, that I was feeling miserable. You might have noticed that I've used a question. In my head, I'm thinking a question. What am I going to do all day? It has been written in first person. I use I a lot. I can't believe that I have to go to Grandpa's house. I wish. I don't want to go to Grandpa's. I have also used some capital letters. This adds emphasis and dramatic effect. When you're reading it, it gets the feeling across that Tony is mad. He might be shouting inside his head, I don't want to go to Grandpa's. Now it is your turn to write an internal monologue for Tony in the car on the way to Grandpa's house. This should be three or four sentences long. And you should include Tony's feelings and Tony's thoughts. It needs to be in first person. Remember, you are pretending that you are Tony. If you were Tony, what might you be thinking in your mind? Pause the video while you have a go at this task and then press play when you are ready for the next part on your chilli challenge. Great job writing your first monologue. Now you're going to write another monologue, but this time how Tony might be feeling in the car on the way home from Grandpa's house. How has his mood changed? How might Tony be feeling now? He spent all day going on exciting adventures with Grandpa. What might he be thinking? Again, try to get into character and imagine you are Tony. If this had just happened to you, what thoughts would be in your mind? For your second monologue, I want you to choose a chilly challenge. The mild challenge is to use first person to describe Tony's feelings. For example, I imagine Tony is feeling elated. He's probably ecstatically happy after having such an exciting day. The spicy challenge is to use a range of personal pronouns. For example, I, we, my and me to recount events. Tell me what you and Grandpa got up to using personal pronouns. For example, me and my Grandpa had the most incredible adventures. I can't wait to go back to his house next week. And for today's hot challenge, I would like you to include a flashback memory. Why does Tony not want to go to Grandpa's? What might have happened the last time he went? For example, he might be thinking, last time I went to Grandpa's, all he did was talk about boring old cars. In your writing, I should see a contrast for how he was feeling at the start of the day and how his mood has changed on his way home. Use this to show how his thoughts and feelings have changed. Please use the rest of your literacy time to write your internal monologues. I can't wait to read how you empathise with Tony's character.